prochain conférencier est le professeur Harvey Rodish. He is a molecular and cell biologist, professor at the Department of Biology at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, the MIT, in Cambridge. Thank, Thank you. you so much Thank for getting you. up so early. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it is an honor and a pleasure. And <laughs> I want to thank Stefan Constantinescu for nominating me to the Academy, and I hope I have something to contribute. I will focus my talk more on my activities outside of MIT than inside. Um, as you see, I was trained as a geneticist with Norton Zinder. I was a postdoc with Sidney Brenner and Francis Crick and have been on the Department of Biology at MIT since 1968. I was one of the founders of the Department of Biological Engineering. Um, and many of my current activities are in the area of entrepreneurship and developing drugs. Um, in the 1970s, my lab worked out the ER to Golgi to plasma membrane biogenesis of membrane glycoproteins and understood that folding of proteins in the endoplasmic reticulum was necessary for their secretion. We did a lot of work on recycling of several receptors, including the mechanism of iron delivery. And beginning in the 1980s, we started cloning membrane proteins to understand their function and biogenesis. Uh, we cloned band 3 the erythroid anion exchange protein. We cloned the receptors for uh, galactose terminal glycoproteins. Most importantly, we identified and cloned the receptors for erythropoietin and TGF-beta, which enabled us to begin studying signaling pathways downstream of these receptors, and particularly focusing on red cell development, identified many genes important for terminal stages of red cell production, including gene induction and repression, chromatin condensation, and enucleation. And more recently, we have focused on earlier stages of red cell development, uh, trying to understand how the burst forming unit erythroids were regulated and trying to increase their output of other red cell progenitors to treat many anemias that cannot be treated with erythropoietin. And in parallel, we identified adiponectin, one of the first adipokines, and then focused on genes and proteins involved in insulin resistance and stress responses in adipocytes. Uh, most recently, we have studied non-coding RNAs, microRNAs and link RNAs, that are essential for the differentiation of erythroid cells and others essential for formation of adipose cells. Identified their messenger RNA and protein targets and their roles in cell development and disease. Proud as I am of my research accomplishments, I'm much prouder of the accomplishments of my many trainees about 200. Uh, as you can see, eight are in the U.S. academies. Uh, two have won the Nobel Prize. Many are leaders internationally. And uh, I keep in constant contact with my former students. This is an image of probably the best scientific symposium many of us have been to. It was a two-day symposium in which former members of my laboratory gathered together at MIT, and uh, many of them presented their research. But besides these activities, I, like many of my colleagues at MIT, have become entrepreneurs and taken research out of our own laboratories and started biotech companies. As you may know, Surrounding MIT are almost 300 biotech companies and 18 of the world's largest pharmaceutical companies have facilities 
within a kilometer or so of Kendall Square, which is where the Whitehead Institute is. Um, at MIT, we are given one day outside professional activities, and many of us use it to start companies. Just briefly, I'll give you two vignettes about companies that I have worked with, uh, beginning with Genzyme, a company that I helped uh, put together with seven of my colleagues back in the late 1970s. And our first drug was an enzyme replacement for type 1 Gaucher disease, a lysosome storage disease missing the enzyme glucocerebrosidase. Uh, in the type 1 patients where there's a bit of residual enzyme, it does not affect the central nervous system, yet it can be progressive, debilitating, and sometimes life-threatening. Uh, a number of symptoms, generally not lethal, but very debilitating. And without going into details, we developed not only the recombinant protein uh, made in Chinese hamster ovary cells, but we modified the oligosaccharides such that it was targeted to the mannose receptor, which is found on macrophages, the cells that mainly need this enzyme. And it was approved therapeutically in the late 80s it's a personalized medicine for a rare disease, a recombinant protein that is targeted to a specific type of cell. And Genzyme started a lot of activities uh, in the commercial area dealing with rare diseases. When I started Genzyme, I had no idea that Gaucher disease was in my family. It turned out about 15 years later that one of my seven grandchildren, he was diagnosed prenatally with Gaucher disease and was treated at Boston Children's Hospital with the drug that his grandfather helped develop. And as you can see, he is doing extremely well. He recently completed a, gosh, what is it in kilometers? About a 5,000 kilometer bicycle trip across the United States, having to stop twice to get an infusion of the drug. So it became very personal to me to work with other groups to treat rare diseases. And one of them that I'm currently working on, Dravet syndrome, is a catastrophic epilepsy and developmental disorder. What makes Dravet fascinating from a scientific point of view is it is caused by haploinsufficiency, loss of function of one allele of this gene, SCN1A, which encodes a voltage-gated sodium channel um, predominantly expressed in inhibitory GABAergic neurons, but elsewhere in the brain and to some extent in the heart and other tissues. And it's a company that I recently started with two parents, Warren and Daniel, who have daughters with Dravet syndrome. Uh, girls, the young women that I have met, uh, severe developmental intellectual disability. And you begin to see the need for these types of therapies. Um, I co-founded the company with Jeff Collar, a professor now at Johns Hopkins University. We are developing. We're not there yet, but the preclinical work looks very good. Um, it turns out that many genetic disorders uh, are caused by nonsense mutations. Uh, in particular, both daughters have the most common mutation that causes uh, Drave, which is an arginine to UGA suppress, uh, nonsense mutation, and we have tRNAs that suppress it. But more importantly, we have, are developing techniques dealing with the structure of the genetic code and codon usage, in that by expressing tRNAs that read non-optimal codons in specific messenger RNAs, we can increase the stability of the message and its protein output. And we are developing these treatments 
as uh, potential therapies, not only for Dravet, but for a large number of other haploinsufficient genetic disorders. The other point I want to make deals with what is a major professional occupation, which is writing this textbook. The first edition uh, we did in the early 80s, it was published in 1986 with David Baltimore and Jim Darnell. This and its subsequent editions have been translated into about 14 languages, legally 14 languages, several others that were not sanctions, but that's a separate issue. Beginning in the third edition, which came out in the mid-90s, I became the lead author, which requires me to solicit uh, new authors, work with them, teach them how to write a textbook, and manage the whole sort of process of synthesizing a large number of brilliant scientists to work together as a team to produce this advanced undergraduate graduate textbook. And I'm proud to announce, uh, you're the first ones to see the cover, the uh, ninth edition was just published last week and it should be in bookstores very soon. Not to sound arrogant, but I do find myself a rock star when I speak in many institutions worldwide. Here you see me in Uppsala signing autographs. What I'm particularly proud of is the Vietnamese translation. It was organized by a student of mine, Min Le, a Vietnamese woman, uh, who all working pro bono, we get no money for this, but she recruited a group of translators to translate the book into the Vietnamese language. We found a publishing house in Ho Chi Minh City to publish the translation in five small paperback volumes. Vietnam is a country of 90 million people where unlike more developed countries, the students really cannot learn from English books. So you can see the publication of the book, uh, a street filled with 500 students. Um, here you see me in a poster, uh, a huge uh, billboard actually. It was quite stunning and very surprising, but it was a privilege really to sit there and meet the students and uh, autograph my textbooks. You can see how hungry they are for this kind of book. And then finally, um, I always have served on advisory boards pro bono again. I don't get paid for it, but I'm currently on the board of trustees of Boston Children's Hospital, the operating board of the hospital, where I have oversight of all of the research in hospital, which gives me a privilege because I'm also able to uh, help raise large funds, uh, large amounts of money to support research at the hospital. I, we just concluded a capital campaign. I was on the committee, the executive committee, where we raised $1,300,000,000 uh, to support activities at the hospital. And finally, I teach. I teach now, I used to teach cell biology for many years, I currently teach both undergraduate and graduate courses in biotechnology. The one I teach with Professor Lowe of the Sloan Management School, the business school, is now online as an edX course, and it's enrolled for over 20,000 students. So let me end again by thanking the Academy for this great honor, and I hope to work with you in many of these areas. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Rodish.